Hey guys. Hey guys, welcome back to the RV again. Today, I'm going to be installing a wireless battery cutoff switch. Um, this, again, this is a used uh, RV that we bought that was a prior rental. Uh, one problem, and I probably could track down the, the, the source by pulling fuses and and, and, and doing a, a different test, but this batter, this RV has a draw and the battery constantly goes dead. It, it in, in four or five days, uh, I don't have enough juice to start, um, to start the, the engine or the generator. And, and it's basically also wore down the house battery. So there's, there's barely, you know, we, we do get light sensor led. There's just enough for them, but there's not enough to do the emergency transfer switch. So today, I've got this wireless switch, uh, which is pretty cool. It's got these uh, these little remotes. They'll go on our, our remote caddy as well. And it basically comes with everything you see here. I think this thing, this kit costs about 50 bucks, uh, 50 or $60 on Amazon. Um, it looks like it's really easy to install. So it's got a, a positive and a negative wire. Uh, so the positive and negative obviously go to the positive and negative of the battery so that you can power this device so that the it can it can activate the switch inside. Uh, and this is a pretty powerful one. It says it's got uh, it's 250 amps, uh, so I think it should do enough with uh, just it up. So 12 volts, 250 amps, um, 450 amps of in instantaneous current. So I think this is going to be plenty um, to start this RV. It's 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 going to be pretty simple, and then, and then keep the, the power running through it. If not, it's really easy to to disconnect, as you'll see. So um, it does come with uh, the positive and negative terminal posts. And then uh, these uh, post studs that one of the one of these will actually one of these will go onto the bottom of one end, and then this um, this little bridge will come over to the side of the the terminal, and this terminal will go onto the onto the battery. Um, so that's how that's going to be set up. Uh, I'm going to run it to the the negative side. Um, so up here on these posts, if they're red and black, uh, as you can see, so you know what's what's positive and what's negative. And then uh, you can see here uh, if you can uh, if you get these, you'll see there's a negative here and there's a positive here marked on the terminal. And again, you know the, the positive is not going to fit very well. Um, you know the negative is not going to fit very well on the positive because the positive post is slightly larger. So I'm going to put this together, and then we're going to go out. I'm going to turn the RV off, and I'm going to hook this up onto the RV, and we're going to make sure it works. All right, guys, we'll, we'll get this together here for you. So I already took off one of these posts. Now I'll take off the second one. These are 10 millimeter. And then this is going to connect to clearly to the battery. So I'm going to connect this to, it's probably going to be facing this way, which shouldn't be a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and connect this negative post, which is where the current current battery will go. That's a three quarter inch ratchet. So the current battery, ter uh, battery terminal, uh, or I'm sorry, battery cable will go there. And then, I don't think there's any real way this is supposed to go, but I'm going to put the smaller, the smaller hole on the remote control box, tighten it down nice and snug. Okay, so with this terminal, these 10 millimeter wires, so just as you see, this is how it comes. It's got this spacer. Um, if I run this spacer, if I run the this bridge to the spacer, then obviously if I run the negative on this side, it's gonna there's not gonna be enough room, and I'm not gonna have good contact with the negative. Um, I also thought about just running this down without that spacer, but I don't like the strength of this, so I think I'm gonna keep the spacer. I'm just gonna keep it there. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and run the run the bolt right through it, right through the this bridge, and right into that into that spacer. And I think I think we'll be just fine, and that's going to give it some added strength, um, and then it'll allow me to put this other bolt right through, right through again the top here, um, without cross threading it. It's already threaded, but what's cross thread, so that this one can be connected with the negative wire to provide power to the. I guess we'll call it a module. Sure, let's call it a module. So, the other benefit here is that 
you have some articulation in case you need to move to move it so all right i'm going to turn the rv off i'm going to hook this up to the battery um we'll bring you in there and then we'll test it out all right everything here is metric um so we've got eight millimeters on this stud 10 millimeters on the positive stud and then uh, it's a 13 millimeter on um on the clamp for the other tool so first thing i did was break this one free this is this stud over here is where i'm going to put the the positive uh terminal for the module so the negative terminal is off i'll pull that to the side and now i will i will install the module and this one is simply a 13 millimeter all right so i spread this negative terminal out it was a little mangled i think i think it may actually have been installed up, upside down on the battery previously so that's awesome once we're installed i did have to tighten everything down this stuff all likes to come loose for some it is not it all all of these connections on on this module this cheap module are trying to come loose just enough wire to put this positive terminal on this positive wire we're connected i guess the best bet is to go inside and give this a, sh a try okay guys good news and bad news good news is the switch works the bad news is i may have another problem but a problem for another day still this has solved the problem so i'll start with the module turned off but when I power on the RV, we still have power. But I know that that's not coming from this, from the main engine battery. This is coming from the house battery. Because when I try to start it, it, it doesn't have enough power to start. But then when I turn on the engine battery, now, when I turn on that engine battery, now she fires up just fine. So the engine battery is good. This switch is working. Uh, but the house batteries are still wired into the, the chassis of the motorhome. And I don't think it's necessarily supposed to be wired that way. I know that this battery can power, uh, will charge the house batteries. But that's, um, I, I, there's an emergency start button over here that's supposed to provide the power when you want to start this off of the house batteries. It shouldn't be trying to start it without that, that switch. So maybe that switch um is bad and it's shorted i'll have to check that out at a later date if that switch isn't bad i could just have bad house batteries and it could be causing an issue with the low battery so i'll i'll have to check those out at a later date as well so thanks again guys uh if you have any questions on this or if you know why i'm still getting power back through the chassis from the house batteries let me know uh, but this work i'm going to tie this all up and thanks for sticking around for this long we'll see you on the next one